All right, guys, check this out. What I'm doing for you today is making the single most important video that you will see that's going to help you to understand what's going on with your adrenal fatigue. I can tell you that with years of experience, I mean probably 15 years of doing functional medicine, that this is the single most contributing factor to adrenal fatigue. And in just a few minutes, you're gonna understand all of this stuff. So stick with me. What I wanna do is first show you a quick little graph that describes uh, what's going on with our adrenal glands. And to be specific, our adrenal glands don't fatigue, that's a misnomer. They respond to changes in central signals from our brain through ACTH that over time redirect how the glands are functioning in response to stress. So what I wanna do is I want to um, show you a quick graph here. So check this out. Now on the Y axis, uh, we are going to have uh, cortisol and DHEAS. And DHE A. Be sure to check the S. This is the sulfated form of DHEA, which is made in the adrenal glands. Cortisol is going to be defined by a straight line, and DHEAS is defined by a dotted line. And on the x axis here, we're going to have time. Now, this um, period of time can differ between different people. Right, so we'll say time. Could be days with a series of excessive stressors. Could be months, typically it's more months to years. Um, so, and all of this that I'm going to explain to you is based on work by a, a doctor named Hans Selye, who almost won the Nobel Prize for Medicine in 1935. He was a, I think, Austrian or Hungarian physician. And he found that the adrenal glands responded in basically three different phases to stressors. And this is what we have artificially called stages one, two, and three. So check this out, you're gonna understand this all. So for starters, in the alarm stage, so this is Hans Selye, 1935, and I'd recommend you look him up on Wikipedia. He did some really interesting work. So in the alarm stage, the initial stages of uh, an assault on our adrenal glands function, both of our cortisol and our DHEA are elevated. Now what this does is this typically corresponds with what we like to describe as a stage one adrenal fatigue, but the adrenals don't fatigue, don't forget that. Okay, so what happens is, then we move into what's known as the adaptive stage. And um, this is a stage that can last for some period of time, but typically this is characterized by a persistently high cortisol, okay? But this is what's important, is the DHEAS begins to be suppressed here. Why is this? It's because Cortisol is what's known as a catabolic hormone. It's our stress hormone. And what it does is it breaks down tissues to keep us alive. And what Celia demonstrated is that it makes changes in our immune system through the thymus gland, uh, the brain, our cardiac function. It melts our muscles, it melts our bones. It causes our guts to be permeable. But this is an adaptive stage. So what happens is if we are in a catabolic state, Bring, breaking apart our tissues to stay alive, we are not in an anabolic state, which is actually building tissues, and this is characterized by DHEAS. So over time, as we put more stress on the adrenal systems, we start to see that this DHEA goes down. We're no longer building tissues. We're no, no longer healing ourselves. We're no longer re repairing tissues. We're breaking things down to stay alive. And this is what is known as the adaptive stage also erroneously known as a stage two adrenal fatigue. But this is good to understand what's going on here. And then finally, what happens is there is a final stage in which our cortisol starts to go down as well. So in kind of this stage three of adrenal fatigue, um, out here, um, what we find is we find that our brain has basically said, look, we're melting away the body. We need to put an end to this. And that's when we start to see people that have a low cortisol and a low DHEAS. Why do I looking at, enjoy looking at DHEAS? Because this is associated with the adrenal glands. It's not made in some of the other tissues in the body like the ovaries and the testes that can make DHEA. Okay, so this is known as the collapse stage, right? And what Hans Selye showed is that at a certain point, our brain directs our adrenal glands to stop making cortisol, stop making DHEAS. But the important thing for you to realize is that this represents a more advanced state of adrenal fatigue. Okay, this is the absolute nugget of 
what all of our fatigue syndromes stem from because cortisol is our master planner. It's the king of hormones, right? So it's telling our gut how to work. It's telling our sex hormones how to work. It's telling our skin, our cardiovascular system, our liver, and our brain what to do. So at a certain point, if you've pressed on that stress button for too long, you've gone too far along this time scale of continually asking your body to make adrenaline and cortisol, at a certain point, like the song says, what goes up must come down. Hopefully this is helpful. Um, of course, if you have any comments, be sure to leave them in the comments below. Uh, reach, out to, uh, reach out to me, let me know your thoughts, and uh, hopefully this was helpful. Alrighty, this should clarify things for you, and we'll see you again. Bye-bye.